The title of my book is An Uncommon Field. It's about the Flight 93 Temporary Memorial at Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The book consists of 90 photographs, all black and white, and 25 sections of text. The photographs were taken over a two and a half year period, uh, all seasons, all weathers. I wanted to, to see this space as much as I could in all different lights and conditions. The text takes the events of Flight 93, talks about them. It also talks about the memorial and how it came about. And then it also talks about my experiences as a photographer going to the site to explore it and the people I met and the experiences I had in photographing. The temporary memorial started almost the same day that the crash happened. Um, while the, re the first responders were still there, the local people in Shanksville started putting up little tributes, little crosses, flowers out of nowhere. And then people in Shanksville would put up hay bales on their lawns or sheets of plywood that people would just come by and start attaching things. And it grew from there. Eventually the Park Service, who had arrived early on the site, not to take control but just to help, uh, arranged for this temporary memorial to be made. And it consisted of a 40-foot section of cyclone fence and uh, that's about it, the way it started. And local people put that up. And then a local religious group made benches. And another group made slate angels to put in the ground for flags and uh, for each one of the, the passengers and crew. And it just grew from there. I became acquainted with the site through a very strange circumstances. Uh, I, I visited it one day with a bunch of business associates. And I d had no expectations for the site. I, I knew that it was out there. I had never been there. And this was in 2005. And when I got out of the car, I was totally taken with the space. It just sort of engulfed me. I the space itself there was just gripping to me to the extent that everyone else went to look at the memorial and I walked away. I walked up the road. I knew that I had to explore this place, but I did not want to do it with the people that I was going to be with. So I went back in about a week and spent a day there just on my own. And it was as if the place talk to me. It was as if it said, hey, bring a camera. You know, you want to get to know us. And I started going back there on my own. And within a year or so, I realized I had quite a few photographs and started putting them together and kept building the sequence. And then I thought, well, this is actually a book. I hadn't planned on it, but there it is. One of the things I'm most interested in photography is exploring objects and things rather than people. Actually, I am exploring people through the objects. I think that the, the objects that a person uses and the settings of their lives tells you more about that person than if you were to actually ask them or actually take a, a photograph of them. If you take a photograph of their room, you learn about that person. So when I first started to photograph out at uh, Flight 93, I thought I was going to be photographing the endless series uh, and juxtaposition of the items in the temporary memorial. That it, you could move the camera six inches and have a whole new composition. But as time went on, I realized more of the space 
and the location was uh, what was really influencing me and influencing what was on the temporary wall. The photos that move me most in the book turned out to be the ones with the drag lines that were up on the hill. There were two drag lines that were used for the strip mining operation. And they were abandoned and sitting on this, this ridge overlooking the site. And the people early on who worked at the site, uh, helping the tourists and the visitors to understand what was there, started calling them the guardians. Because the drag lines were there and the only witnesses to what happened. And the way they sat up on the hill, these two gigantic pieces of machinery, one with a seven-story boom on it, it was like there was some kind of totemic figure up there on the hill watching and I remember the first time I went there, when I turned away from the site because I couldn't look at it, I looked right up at the hill at these two machines and I had a special feeling about these machines. They were in a location where you weren't supposed to go, but I put on a hard hat and safety vest and would drive up there and I spent a lot of time on the hill with them, just sitting with them and photographing them and the photographs that I probably feel the closest to are the ones that have the drag line, the guardian somewhere in them. There's